हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एक्चुअली वॉन्ट टू आस्क यू क्विक क्वेश्चन वॉट डू यू थिंक इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट फॉर एनी एप्लीकेशन और एनी सॉफ्टवेयर इज इट देर कोड बेस इज इट देर मार्केटिंग सिस्टम और इज इट देर सिस्टम डिजाइन वेल बिलीव इट और नॉट सिस्टम डिजाइन ट्रम्स ऑल दीज टू अदर थिंग्स ऑफ कोर्स कोड बेस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बिजनेस फंक्शनैलिटी इज इम्पॉर्टेंट वॉट दे आर ट्राइंग टू सॉल्व इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बट सिस्टम डिजाइन एंड सिस्टम आर्किटेक्चर इज वॉट मेक्स दिस प्रोडक्ट वायबल फॉर मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल ऑल अक्रॉस वर्ल्ड एंड दैट इज वाई इफ यू गो थ्रू एस एन पी फाइव हंड्रेड और द टॉप कंपनीज इन द वर्ल्ड दे आर ऑल आई टी कंपनीज वाई बिकॉज दे सर मिलियंस ऑफ पीपल एवरी सिंगल मिनट और एवरी सिंगल सेकेंड ऑफ द डे एंड दे डू इट फ्लॉलेसली बट एंड दैट इज वॉट नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट बेसिकली आई हैव डिसाइडेड टू डाइव डीपर इन टू द रेलम ऑफ सिस्टम डिजाइन so what i'm going to do is over the next few weeks or months i'm going to make somewhere between 75 to 100 videos covering everything related to system design that includes stuff like what is system design uh, why do we need it what is distributed system what is on premises what is cloud computing or uh, design systems like uber google netflix what not and we are going to take a gradual approach so first we are going to start with the easy stuff and then slowly we are going to go deeper and deeper into more complex realm of software designs its concepts and its implementation i hope this is going to be a fun exercise and why am i doing it again the reason is simple i want to become an expert in that field and the only way to become an expert if you can teach others so i'm going to learn and i'm going to teach it to you hope it it's a, it becomes a win win for both of us and let's see okay so after the quick introduction now let's get started to understanding what the system design is and uh, do your first very first introduction to it uh, in this video what we are going to do is we are going to understand that how does a simple application runs what is a client and what is a server uh, what is a system design and what are some of the key concepts that we should be aware of that we are going to learn in the subsequent videos so first let's say that you are a new student uh, you just recently joined college or you are trying to learn on your own whatever the case is you are trying to learn that how does a software behaves and how to make softwares or how to build applications so what is the first thing you are going to do is you are going to pick your favorite language either java python uh, php there are bunch of different options right you can pick or choose any one but the first thing that they are going to do is that you are going to write the hello world program and what hello world program does is that uh it basically prints out the world hello world and in any particular language so what you could what you would do is you would go to your laptop uh you would install some tools like e eclipse or intellij and then you would start basically writing the code that runs and that uh, publishes this word hello world and the moment you run this code this line of code what is going to happen is that it is going to print out this word hello world and you are pretty happy with yourself you did something that was not not existing in this world and you basically just created a software out of nothing so that is in itself a cool achievement but what you really did just right now is that you created a program that ran on a server now you must be imagine that hey this was just my own plain simple laptop there is no server this is not fancy this is not looking like a data center nothing like that but wherever any application runs it is being defined as a server now in this case the application you created just spit out this word hello world the moment you hit enter or the moment you run this application now let's say you you become a little bit more uh, courageous and you want to do something a little bit smarter so what you would do is that for this program you would actually create a uh, create uh, an api so api most of you might be aware about it but if you are not don't worry about it we are going to have a, a whole chapter about uh, that in in the future but uh, typically you expose like an http url that defines and that basically makes a call to this program that you just generated and when someone makes a call let's say to this program then it, it you print out hello world to them so now what you did is that again your computer is still behaving like a server but the person making this http request is now your client it can be anyone it can be some person who is making the call it can be some other system that is making the call it can be some facebook group that is making the call anything you are not concerned about that all you are concerned about is that whenever a call like http www. 
let's say xyz.com comes in uh, and it eventually call will go through your system and basically your system is going to spit out the word hello world and this is the most simple definition of an application or a software if you take it can be anything take a look at like facebook amazon google they all use the same logic what you typically do is that on your screen uh, let's say that you are the user on your screen you basically type some url or you basically call some uh, website like www.fb.com so that what in turn does that is that this call transmits over the entire internet and eventually it ends up at one of the facebook servers and that facebook server gets notified that hey someone is trying to access this website so now go ahead and provide them all the data so in the server they do a lot of backend computation and eventually you get back a response with the fb page looking on your computer and this is how the trans transaction works now you must be wondering that this seems relatively simple if this is how facebook works what is the big fuss about all of the system design and all of these topics well you will understand it pretty shortly so now let's go on to the topic that what is system design and why do we actually need it now again going back to our example let's say that initially you have created a code you have exposed it with a with a url called let's say xyz.com okay so whenever someone presses xyz.com the call comes to the program that you have created and it spits out the word hello world and uh, it is working as expected now suddenly for some reason your xyz.com became really popular and what happened is that previously only let's say 100 people were calling to this website and your website was working fine you were running it on your own computer or pc and uh, th there was no issues with that but now since or rather than 100 people calling it let's say that 50,000 people starts calling this website every single day what would happen is that of course your home laptop is not sufficient or capable enough to handle that much load uh, and even let's say that 50,000 transactions happen every hour that is not too much but still let's say that that happens your laptop is basically not able to take the entire load so now what now what do you will do of course you are a smart person also you are a rich person so you go ahead go to the best buy you buy a bigger laptop and then on this bigger laptop that has more specifications more ram more everything you try to run your software and rather than application calling your applications calling your older software now you are pointing them to this newer newer software so now you have just increased the size of your server and this is awesome this feels amazing there are no issues with that but even let's say you keep on getting more and more popular and now rather than 50,000 people calling you let's say that every hour uh, 500,000 people starts calling you what would happen then there are no you go to best buy and you realize that there are no bigger computers that are capable to handle all of this load and now what happens is that amongst these 500,000 uh, applications or calls only let's say 100,000 are getting the correct hello world response all the other 400,000 responses they are getting some rejection message because you are too busy to respond to everyone else now that is a problem for to solve exactly problems like these system design or system architecture was created and now let's understand that what system design is basically so what system design is is the method to first of all understand that what are the requirements so first phase would come in for any client or any application is to understand requirement and once the requirement has been understood then uh, this requirement can be anything requirement can be that okay how much cost we we are currently dealing with what is the business functionality we are dealing with what are the number of users we currently have there, there can be 100 different things in that comes in the requirements but what you do with these requirements is the portion that is defined as a system design and whether you are a software architect or you are a software engineer software developer program manager project manager you all have very key interest in this designing decision decisions because these decisions are going to define that how the transaction flow is going to, going to look like uh, in your application where you are going to call some database to store all the values or to retrieve some values where you are going to use caching 
and where you are going to do bunch of different uh, processing before sending the the value back to the consumer so that is why system design is so important and if we talk about some of the key concepts that what system design is and what it does basically system design identifies that how your system should behave when either the number of load increases which means that the number of users that, that are calling your system it increases or uh, let's say that you you want to reduce cost or you want to uh, basically have low latency or you want to have a um, high reliability let's say uh, in some other part of the world let's say somewhere in indonesia uh, suddenly your application becomes so popular but you are sitting on the other side of globe in the U united states what's going to happen people who try to call your application in the us they are going to see significant latencies or significant delays in their transactions and they're not going to be happy with your service so you might lose potential business what what you are going to do about it how can you fix that these are all things that are typically considered during the system design phase and if we talk about some of the key concepts basically some key concepts include terms like scalability availability throughput fault tolerance load balancing reliability and then on top of these there are bunch of different other considerations but these are typically the most popular ones that are the concepts that we need we need to be concerned about and then uh, slowly we are going to learn more about these in the next videos so the intention for this video was to give you just a quick introduction that why do we need a system design uh, how, what problem it solves what problem is being generated by if the number of users increase and how can we take care of them and uh, in the next videos we are going to go much deeper into these these discussions as well